Heart Minutes, I've reviewed a number of studies in the last year concerning the use of FFR in percutaneous coronary interventions and in the treatment of coronary stenosis. Now, in Jack interventions, there is a study that cautions us once again, essentially saying not so fast to those of us who would simply use angiographic criteria to make decisions about intervention. This study evaluated the long-term clinical outcomes of patients with angiographically intermediate proximal left anterior descending coronary artery stenosis in whom the revascularization strategy was based on FFR. 730 patients with a 30 to 70 percent isolated stenosis in the proximal LAD had FFR measurements to guide treatment strategy. When FFR was more than 80, the patients were treated medically. When FFR was less than 0.80, the patients underwent revascularization with either coronary artery bypass graft surgery or percutaneous coronary intervention. 40-month clinical follow-up was obtained in all patients. The five-year survival of the medically treated group was compared with that of a reference population, and for each patient, four controls were selected from an age and sex matched control population. The analysis showed that five-year survival estimate was about 90% in both medically treated and control groups. So, medical treatment of patients with a hemodynamically non-significant stenosis confirmed by an FFR of greater than 0.80 in the proximal LAD is associated with an excellent long-term clinical outcome with survival at five years similar to an age and sex match control population. Pay attention to this study. We are going to have to become more and more accountable for our decisions in treating coronary artery stenosis with PCI and using FFR may be one way of supporting our decisions. I'm Peter Block and this is a Cardiosaurus Heart Minute.